Hello and welcome back to episode 12 of The Sinking City. I'm Vic and you're watching yet another Let's Play channel. So let's dig around in the archives. That's what everybody wants to see, right? So we've got crimes, um, property crimes, subjects, suspects, um, district, old grove, and we need to go with that one. There we go. Possible associates. Sydney Stokes, age 21. Residence, Salvation Harbor, west of Moreland and Salvation. <laughs> Crimes, jaywalking, lollygagging, and jury duty dodging. Okay, so that's what we want. Uh, Moreland and Salvation in Salvation. Done. We got t -t -t Salvation and um, what? And Moreland? So he's like here ish I think let's go have a look and once again with a tiny investment of effort I have done your job I mean, at least somebody put in the work to make those archives usable. Those guys could be even more useless than they are. Mm, I guess, I guess that's it. We'll grab a boat and then head west. There we go. Hey. Thank you. Every time I hear that guy, I think he's saying Oompa Loompa, and I have never bothered to figure out what he's actually saying, because I'm pretty sure Oompa Loompa is funnier. So are these guys totally cut off from the outside world, and if so, where are they getting all the fuel for the little shore boats and stuff? Not that I'm complaining. I guess at least for the short term there is plenty to go around, assuming that you can just run them off whatever. And why wouldn't you assume that? All of this technology is terribly crude anyway, so... It's not like it's going to be that picky about what exactly is combusting. That guy was not looking where he was going. What, uh... What's this? What are these people doing? Going into a cave? They don't seem real happy about it. Nice tattoo. That must have taken some work. Alright, and I'm betting that this is where we want to be. Residence of Sydney Stokes. Mr. Stokes. The price for a separate burial for your mother, Martha Stokes, is 30 bullets. The morgue cannot give you a discount. There are more requests for burials than we have resources or manpower to satisfy. You must make the payment within two weeks, or we will have to inter your mother in a mass grave. Great. Well, now we know why he's doing crimes. Uh, I'm happy to say I've never been hungry enough to consider eating whatever this is. Well, I think at some point it was a cat, um, 
and it looks like it might have a uh, giant shrimp coming out of it, perhaps. Uh, I th I think, Charles, that it's safe to say that you've never even seen one of those. <laughs> Much less been hungry enough to eat it. Get out of the doorway so that you don't get spit upon. Move it. All right. Now we can deal with Yucky Face. I, uh, I keep thinking of nicknames for those guys and then remembering that they would not be appropriate to utter in uh, the company of strangers. So I am not uttering them because you are very strange. Are we good? Do we have any more yuckies that we're going to have to deal with? Why is there not water down there? See, I hear yucky noises, but I'm pretty sure that it was just them disintegrating. Can I refill any ammo here? Yes, I can. Go ahead and do that. At least we've got a full magazine for the 1911. Oh, Sydney Stokes. You... Looks like Squint was having a bad day. Survived getting a shot just to be stabbed to death. But who did it? Was it your associate? Man, look at the chips in that blade. Um I don't I don't know what I'm looking for here. What is it, please? Okay, I can't escape. Old Bridgeport? Oh, Mind's Eye. That's right. Oh, Ma. I killed him. What have I done? What in the world have I done? Well, you've killed him. That's what you've done. All right, so we need to... Yeah, there we go. At long last, I'll fix what that old ape lover Francis did to you. Hmm. check that out in a minute. I think we should give Charles a minute to recover while we look and see if there are any goodies that we can take. I hear something. Alright, buddy. Let's, uh, let's have a look here. Another. Ah, get away from the. Oh, thank the gods. I thought you were another monster. How did you get behind an illusory wall? Nice trick with the wall. How'd you manage it? It wasn't me. She put the wall there with some kind of hocus pocus. Yeah, so who is Stokes, she? I presume. Aye, aye, that's right, right. 
Do I, do I know you? Don't think so. I'm here about Herbert Glover. I believe you know him. Or, should I say, knew him. Ah, uh, okay. You said she put the wall here. Who is she? She, she, she's our employer. I don't know her name or anything. She, she promised us a good payout for a simple job. And I fell for it like a chump. Yeah, you did. What did she hire you to do? Uh, the job seemed simple enough. Go to the collector's house, grab some fancy mirror, and then hoof it out of there. So where's this fancy mirror now? She took it. When me and Phil met her with the goods, they, they got into a big bro out and she shifted him. Okay, what am I to do now? Phil was the idea guy. I, I was... I'm just a sap. Were you hired to kill the collector too? Or was that just for laughs? I, I, I swear to, okay? I, it wasn't part of the plan. It was an accident. The guy started shooting at us and I panicked. You panicked? Really? That's your excuse. Please, as Kay is my witness, I didn't mean to kill anyone. I'll give you everything I have. Just, just let me walk. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> the I panicked is a reasonable explanation, but you killed a man. Well, you've had quite a night. Break-in, theft, and manslaughter. I'm gonna have to report this. Uh, please, I, I'll, uh, I'll get the char for this. You should have thought of that before you killed a man. What, what do you want? No, oh, he doesn't have anything else to say to me. I should have asked him to describe her. What do we got? Yeah, so that, that we're done with, I think. An unknown woman took possession of the mirror. She killed Phil O'Connell, who had been known as Squint. She said that she'd fix what Francis had done. She may look old, but there's not a frail bone in her body and still more than capable of murder. So now I'm supposed to go back to Throgmorton again? I mean, he's just gonna tell me that I'm wasting his time because I haven't found the woman. But yeah, I guess we can go talk to him. Do I have more points? I don't think I have more points, but yeah, I don't have more points. Okay. And oh, I haven't observed all the evidence. I don't like yellow magnifying glasses. Green is a color that I like. Yellow is a color that I do not like. And it has very little to do with the king who wears it. What do we has here? Martha Stokes. Rest in peace. What? Oh, that's mom. Great. So now we're good. Okay, and the revolver is full. And the 1911 is full. And we don't have any gunpowder. But maybe Throgmorton will pay us. But he's not gonna pay us because he's a dick. We're done with this marker now. I don't need that marker anymore either. And we're going here. Throg Morton. Is that a real name that real people have? Or is that a, a made-up name that Lovecraft made up? Or is it a name that the uh, Frogware folks made up? Throck Morton. I think that's a real name. Hey, I'm still not done. I've looked into your delicate matter. Excellent. Don't spare me any details. Glover's dead. He was killed by a man named Sidney Stokes, who happened to be robbing his place. He wasn't working alone. He had a partner, Phil O'Connell. Didn't end up much better. 
All over uh, some kind of mirror, apparently. Truck. Where is the mirror now? Their employer has it. Uh, some mystery woman. I didn't get her name, but she obviously wasn't fooling around. I see. So, my enigmatic competitor has finally shown her hand. And the thieves are both dead, you say? Sidney Stokes managed to make it out in one piece. Now, if I had to guess, he's probably holed up at his home. Want the address? I would welcome it. I'll take pleasure in uh, educating him on some, uh, shall we say, essential truths. It wouldn't have killed you to let me know you were going after the mirror from the start. As I said, this is a very delicate matter. I wasn't confident I could trust you with such sensitive information until now. I mean, I've already been investigating several sensitive matters for you. All right, I've held up my end of the bargain. Now, it's your turn. Of course, Mr. Reed. Here's your payment. Now that you know everything, would you accept the second part of the job? Let me guess. You want me to track down the mirror? Yes. And the one who so rudely snatched it from my grasp. Sure. I'm on it. Only got one lead, though. Our culprit had a bone to pick with someone named Francis. Mean anything to you? Ah, yes. That is without doubt my father, Francis Throgmorton. K rest his soul. How's he involved? He's dead, Charles. What's he got to do with this? I found mention of the mirror in his records. That's what led me to take interest. Your father was a prominent man. I'm sure he had enemies. Anyone come to mind? None who would outlive him. You mentioned your father left records. Mind if I take a gander at them? The prospect of you rifling through my father's possessions does not fill me with joy, Mr. Reed. But if that's what you need, so be it. Take this key. I hope he's got a big old pile of gunpowder. Through the looking glass. Yeah, I wonder what the occult story is about the mirror, huh? Okay. Seems an ambitious expedition. Yeah. Like father, like son. Yeah, and they probably also discovered something horrifying. Huh. Curious craftsmanship. This must be worth a four- I'm looking sharp. But I guess that's the point. Hang on. Francis Throgmorton looks like an ordinary dude. So, it would appear that, uh, whatever he found... It's what led his offspring to look so... striking. Francis, divorce is no simple matter these days. It never has been in my legal practice. You must clearly define the fault you shall present to the court, the most common options being cruelty, adultery, or an incurable mental illness. It is my impression that your firstborn's death at the tender age of seven dealt a blow to Bethany's health. I do sincerely hope she recovers, but the court won't share my concerns. Besides, Oakmont Asylum seems to be a very well-run place. Regards, Chauncey. It looks a little familiar. Yeah, so he encountered something in darkest Africa and it changed him. Oh, oh no, 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 no. 1891 must have been a busy year for Francis. Oh, mm, really? Is that Francis Throgmorton's expedition to Africa has proven to be one of the most ambitious, if sadly unappreciated, undertakings of 1891. He has returned with numerous historical artifacts, 
invaluable anthropo anthropological research, a newborn son christened Robert, and a plethora of fascinating cultural insights. Today, in an exclusive interview with the Oakmont Chronicle, he has agreed to share some of those insights with us. Oh, so he's literally a monkey fucker. Is that... <laughs> Is that really what we're what we're going with here? Eighteen ninety one must have been a busy year for Francis. I don't I I don't like the wry laugh that came along with that. Okay, so is that it? I didn't get the found all the evidence notification, I don't think. Oh, Throgmorton, you are... you are not going to be amused. doing this one. Culprit is a woman who has a bone to pick with a certain Francis despite working against Robert. The one behind the mirror theft must be Robert Throgmorton's late father. The Francis mentioned... So... We need to go to the asylum. Is that the deal? Let's have another chat with Fran with uh, Albert. Let's see what he's got to say, and then I think we're going to the asylum. I had some questions about Bethany. I beg your pardon. I don't believe I know anyone of that name. Well, it came up during the investigation. See, your father divorced, and his ex-wife's name was Bethany. Say no more. It is beyond my earliest memories. But, even if it weren't, my father's business is his own. I shall not engage in gossip. Okay. Your father led an expedition back in 1891. Do you know anything about it? I'm not the best person to ask, I'm afraid. I was a babe in arms back then, and my father never made his findings public. It is a great shame, of course. His work would have turned the science of evolution on its head. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Careful, Charles. I think he might be able to rip your arms out. Knowledge point gained. All right, what do we want? We've got maximum sanity. We've got maximum experience. Do we want to be greedy with quest rewards? Mm. We could carry more revolver ammo or more medical stuff. When close to death, slowly regenerate a limited amount of health for one last fighting chance. That sounds cool. Let's do that. Being a little more robust never hurt nobody. It's the opposite of hurting, actually. Okay. Asylum. We need to check that out, I think. And I guess we are going for a boat ride. Well, hey, I guess that answers my question about gas, doesn't it? Somebody just converted a house into a gas station. Turn around. Nope. No boat? What do you mean there's no boat? The boat is... Uh, around a corner. Oh, don't. Do not fall in the water. You might get hit. 
okay, uh, Throgmorton, you're you're pretty much just slapping everybody in the face with it, aren't you? <sighs> how how did your son not figure it out? I'm trying to remember if there was a whoop. A Lovecraft story about the Throckmortons and their peculiar looks. I think there was. On the other hand, uh, I thought that that story about the people who find the weird holes in the mountain and they can't help but squeeze themselves into them and then get turned into monsters, I thought that that was a Lovecraft story too, and it's not. Uh, that author is Japanese and I do not remember his name. It is an excellent story, and it is very much in the flavor of Lovecraft. Uh, but it is not his. And that's one of the fun things I think about uh, Lovecraft, is that there has been a great deal of expanding on his universe uh, by very creative and uh, third parties. Tentacle staff. I think my first exposure to Lovecraftian stuff was the I think it's the second Hellboy movie <laughs> actually uh, I think that's the one where there's a scene where uh, where tentacles just reach down from outer space uh, I, lo I love I'm stuff like that Bethany Throgmorton you got any patience by that name we'd know if we had a Throgmorton although we do have a Bethany or rather, we did. She's missing, and not on one of her usual walks. Imagine that. Her usual walks? You let patients leave the building? Oh, Bethany was harmless, and she always came back. This time, well, I've never known her to be like that. You mean she broke out? Yes, knocked an orderly out cold. She was out the door in a moment. It took us all by surprise. She's usually harmless. I'm sure she is. Any idea where she went? No. She had been odd recently, though. Uh, muttering to herself, and she drew this strange picture on her bedroom wall. That's interesting. Can I take a look at her room? I suppose it couldn't hurt. She had a separate room downstairs. Here's the key, but do watch out for broken glass. Bye. Charles, did you introduce yourself to this woman, or is she just letting you do whatever the hell you want? Watch your pocket. Some patients here have wandering fingers. Good to know. In all chaos, there is a cosmos. In all disorder, a secret order. I wouldn't mind having that for a poster, actually. The end is nigh. It will begin again. What is down comes up. The seed is sowed. Yeah, that sounds about right. Can you hear? Somebody's singing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can you hear it? I can't, but I dig your gloves. Let's play. What is that? I have no idea what game you're playing. Water me. Don't just stare at my leaves. <laughs> Uh, he's my favorite. 
eventually you'll end up where you are meant to be and will be doing <clears throat> and will be doing what you are supposed to do. Nah, I don't know about that. I am not what has happened to me. I am what I choose to become. That I agree with. This must be the uh, 1920s version of inspirational posters. Those do not belong in a mental asylum. It all depends on how we look at things. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, I mean, if it's just a message about perspective, yeah, I guess I can buy that. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh huh. And then? Oh, boring. Been in there. Okay. Do you have anything to say? What can I do for you? Well, what you can do is come back and see me again in episode 13 of The Sinking City. Was that too sudden? Talk to you soon.